Uh, well, I hope everybody had a blessed summer. We're coming toward the end of summer into my favorite time of the year, the fall. Yeah. And, nice. Uh, nice. Day, it is just, we're looking forward to great and mighty things that the Lord will do. Amen. We always have to be a forward looking people, hopeful, always remembering that our Lord is coming soon. Yes. Oh, yes. yes. <laughs> our faith, our trust, that's what it's all about. Um, we strengthen ourselves in the Lord. And so we are going to begin a new series of teachings this morning on two very important Hebrew words. So I'm going to give you those two Hebrew words. You would be wise to take uh, pen and paper and just write down these two words because these two words are very powerful. Mm. And they really make up the, the very core of our teaching. Be very much tied together the Jewish perspective of our faith in Yeshua. And so these two words, the first is emunah, and I'm going to ask that Rochelle spell that word out and give a little bit of what imuna means. And the second word is bitakon. So those two words are your Hebrew words for this series of teachings as we're going to unfold. And you're going to be excited, enlightened, and hopefully by the time we get through this series of teachings, You'll be able to do what Yeshua said, move mountains with your, amen, Rochelle? Amen. Imuna is E, M is in mother, U, N is in Nancy, A, H. Imuna is the noun faith. There are other words for faith, but this is one of the strongest. And it works in hand with bitachon, B I B is a boy, I T, that's T is in Tom, <laughs> A C H O N is in Nancy, and bitachon is acting out is the verb form acting out that faith. The two go hand in hand. That as you have imuna, it is exemplified in your actions you will move according to your faith. And that's why Pastor Gil made the comment he did, that when we are fully moving in our faith as we should be, we can move mountains according to our Lord's word. Amen. That's the, the short form. Is that good, Pastor Gil? That's the short form. And we're going to be building on this imuna bitachon, and uh, those are very two important and very powerful words in Jewish circles because uh, how many of us know that the very basis of our faith uh, goes all the way back to its roots. We call that the Hebrew roots of our Christian faith. And uh, we bring the Judeo-Christian teaching into what we preach and what we teach and so what a way to begin preparing for the new year that is coming up that year Rochelle Rosh Hashanah yes or Rosh Hashanah That's <laughs> yes yes what? I love your jersey what does it say <laughs> show me it's navy Navy, okay, Navy, and the you got the flag, and what's there in the middle? In, in the middle is is another Navy. Navy, okay. This and jersey, on, I wear it in honor of Pastor Frederick, who has a with Beautiful. The Lord. Uh, Beautiful. You know, he um, he wanted to be the trailblazer to heaven, and uh, but he always wore this with much pride. Yes. He, a fellow uh, Navy man, and uh, we always had a lot of fun poking uh, jabs with um, Pastor Edward, who is U.S. Army. So there's always been a 
competition between Army and Navy. And uh, I, I, I try to be impartial, as you can tell. Okay, right. <laughs> That's okay. My but dad was Henry First Airborne. Dad, in honor of Pastor Frederick, because this is the jersey you always wore. Good. So I inherited it when he went on to be with the Lord, and uh, I have embraced it, and I wear it continually because, uh, again, uh, Bring you also. we are gathered together, and uh, those who have uh, gone ahead, we've had such wonderful, wonderful times of talking about uh, the rapture and talking about the end times and the tribulation period, which no one wanted to go through. And uh, so everybody's looking for our departure. Here, there, or in the air. And so Pastor Frederick, as you know, in 2018, went on to be with the Lord. So may the Lord bless his memory on yes. earth. And uh, when we are all rejoicing together, then we'll find out on the other end what the what this whole debate was amen so as we move into and navigate through this pandemic you're going to see these two very powerful concepts of imuna bitakon and it's very for us to prepare for what is ahead because we are navigating through some very treacherous and perilous times as you know the holy spirit has has indicated that in the latter days, uh, there will be perilous times. We are in those times. And we know that uh, we are in the end of days. And many people have asked, well, Pastor, you go tribulation period. Well, uh, we will have tribulation. Yeshua assured us that we would have tribulation, but be of good cheer, I overcome the world. And again, we know that in the world there are tribulations. We are living in very perilous times. It seems like everything's moving toward something that that right now has hearts of people fainting for fear and expectation of what is coming up ahead. Here's where our faith comes in. This is why it's so important that we grasp this teaching and this series of teachings. I will take it. My intent is to present this every day. We will be studying Imuna Bitakon. I will give you very in-depth things so that when you are in discussions or come across those who are of the Jewish tradition, you will be able to relate to them in something that really ties the knot between the Jewish and the Christian, we have faith in God. That's what our Lord taught. We're going to be looking at the text from uh, the Gospel of Mark this morning, but I'm going to open up from Romans chapter 1 and verse, which would actually be 16 and 17. That right there is what I'm going to call anchors what we're going to do teaching over the next several weeks. So with that, let's prepare our hearts, prepare our minds. Michelle, can you go ahead and lead us in prayer as we bring to the word of God? Yes, and, and forgive me, but I just have to say it. You all have the fight between Navy and Army, but my dad trumps you all the 101st Airborne. So in honor of him, I will open us in prayer to what was my dad's life verses. That's why if you're going to use yes. his life verses, you've got to honor him in Henry Amen. Yes. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> yes. This, this was his life verse, and, and I believe it's also been passed down to myself. So very precious to us. That along with another verse, I'll share some other time. But let's let's go to the Lord in prayer, as Pastor Gil said, and have our hearts ready. Adonai Yeshua, we thank you that we are on your team, that we are one together, united in the Ruch HaKodesh, that you are leading us, that every step is ordered by you because we are your children and we want to delight in your ways. Lord God, bring us together now in heart, mind, body, soul, and spirit. Let us just quiet ourselves before you, sit at your feet, and drink in the word as your shepherd brings to us. The message you put on his heart for us to hear, to receive, to 
become a part of us to act on and to carry it out. Lord, let it build our imuna and let us act in bidachon in a way that will show this world a difference that they will want for themselves. So use this time now, Lord, in many ways to meet the needs, to grow us up, to strengthen us, and make us better warriors for you. We thank you for Pastor Gill and his leadership. In the precious name we pray. Amen. 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 So we should all be in Romans chapter. I call these our What happened? <laughs> We can't hear so much noise, whomever is entering. And verse 16. So we're going to look at verse 16. And here again is the Apostle Paul. He's already, always ready to preach, always ready to take the gospel where the gospel has not been taken before. Our ministry focuses on taking the gospel to Israel, to the children of Israel scattered among the nations. We know that uh, Rome is very much a uh, symbol of the exile that has now lasted 2,000 years. The question is, when will this exile end? When will we see the coming of the Moshiach? Uh, again, we focus on the messianic hope. We, we are messianic believers. We believe in in the Messiah, we believe that Yeshua is the promised Messiah, that he came, that he was crucified, that he was buried, that he was raised up on the third day, and he ascended in, into heaven, seated at the right hand of the throne of the Father in heaven, and uh, he has promised that he would come again. We are looking for the coming of the Moshiach. And so we know that in Jewish circles, in synagogues and all that, in temples all across the world, uh, there are those who believe that the Messiah is coming. And so we are preparing our hearts this morning for the coming of Moshiach. We are to be ready. We are to be waiting. We are to be praying. But before we can actually be waiting for the coming of the Messiah, we have to believe that the Messiah is. We have to believe that the one who is promised throughout all of history, from the book of Genesis all the way to the very last chapter of the book of Revelation, we have one continual story of redemption. We know from the beginning to the end, the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning, the end, we put our faith in Yeshua to be the savior of the world. Yeshua came into the world to save sinners. Paul declared himself to be chief among the sinners. And all that, that Paul's life was before he came to faith in Yeshua. Listen, we all have a testimony. We all have a history. We all have something that our lives represented before we came to faith in Yeshua. And so, with that in mind, the Apostle Paul declared as chief of sinners, this chief of sinners was always ready to give a testimony, always ready to preach the gospel. And so on the, on the very tail end of his readiness to preach the gospel to those who are in Rome, understand when we mention Rome we are talking about the Roman exile which began with the fall of Jerusalem and the destruction of the temple at Jerusalem by the Romans we know that the Romans took our people and brought them and marched them into the streets of Rome Rochelle and I had the privilege of raising the Israeli flag at the Arch of Titus which commemorates the fall of Jerusalem and the plundering of the Jewish people and marching the Jewish um, slaves into Rome led by General Titus and we're saying that the Jewish people worldwide are looking for the end of this exile they're looking for the promise 
the promise that has come down through thousands of years of history. And it is simply this. The questions that the apostles asked the Lord before his ascension, will you now restore the kingdom to Israel? You see, all the world is focusing in one place, and that is Jerusalem. And there's one nation born in a day that is looking for the coming of the Messiah. We're here preaching and teaching and preparing the way for the coming of the Messiah. It is our hope and our prayer that every Jewish soul scattered among the nations will come to faith in Yeshua. But before we can even preach faith in Yeshua, just because somebody's Jewish doesn't mean that they believe in God. That's the problem. Many do not believe in God, and it comes as a shock to many because it just seems to be the accepted thought that if you're Jewish, you have faith in God. Well, that's not always true. We have many Jewish people who don't believe in God. They are atheists. They believe in science, but they do not believe in God. Imuna is the obligation. It is the commandment. In the Shema, we say, Hear, O Israel, the Lord, our God, the Lord is one. If you do not believe in God, well, what are you declaring? When a Jewish believer prays, who are they praying to? Now, when I say believer, think for a moment. Who is the God of Abraham? Who is the God of Isaac? Who is the God of Yaakov, Israel? Who is the God that Yeshua said to have faith in? The one we call Father. The Father of us all. Understand, if you do not have imunah, if you do not have faith and believe that God is, nothing is going to be of any benefit to you or to me or to any one of us. Because when we open up the Holy Scriptures, we are reading the Word of God. And we believe that the Word that has come to us through thousands of years of history, is the infallible word of God. Infallible, inerrant. This is the word, the Holy Scriptures that Paul declared can make you wise for salvation. The problem is, if you don't believe in God, there's not going to be any benefit in studying the word of God. All the preaching and all the teaching will be of no value to those who hear because they do not receive it by faith. The failings of Israel in the past is they simply did not believe. Coming out of Egypt, they were eyewitnesses that God is. And with an outstretched hand, with mighty works and wonders that he performed, the plagues in Egypt and all, all that God has demonstrated, all to the very point where Israel received the Torah at Mount Sinai. They were eyewitnesses. We have seen, we have heard God's voice speaking out of the fire. They were terrified. And yet they were not consumed. They did not die. And here we find God the creator of all things. The one we read about who in the beginning created the heavens and the earth. The one we believe said, let there be light, and there was light. The one who said, let us make man in our image, and it was so. We believe, we have faith that God created the universe. 
and that he created it not from something that already existed, but it was created by the word of God. And we believe that the, the heavens and the earth that now exist are maintained. They exist by the same word. You see, we cannot have our existence, we cannot have our being apart from God. Understand, man can never, ever be independent of God. No creature in any place on this universe can have his existence apart from God, the creator. We need God. Our very breath, our very life, our very being, our very movements, everything in him we live, we breathe, we move, we have our being. God is the creator. And the Lord our God is one. That's our faith. That's Simona. And once you have this faith, which in itself is a gift from the creator, because you cannot even believe in the one true God unless he reveals himself to you. And so through this faith, Paul declares in verse 16, for I'm not ashamed of the gospel. I'm not ashamed. We're not ashamed. We're not ashamed to say that we are messianic believers. We believe. We have faith. We believe in the coming of the Moshiach. We believe that Yeshua, HaMashiach, he is the promised Messiah. He is the one true son of the true and living God. Understand, Yeshua who said the Father and I are one, it's a mystery. How can God exist in three? In the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Well, we're not here to compound the mystery. What we're here to declare is that this faith, this imuna, is not something that just began with the church age. It goes all the way back to the very beginning. You see? When Abraham was being called out of Ur of the Chaldeans, understand something. Abraham believed God, and it was accounted to him for righteousness. You see, without faith, it's impossible to please God. All of our efforts to try to please God by living according to the word of God is futile. If we do not believe that he is, you see, Imuna is believing. You believe that God is. Without faith, everything else will be of no value. You see, how can we keep the commandments of a God we don't believe exist? God said, well, if we don't have Imuna, that God exists, that he really is, everything else is meaningless. And so you see, when Paul declares, I'm not ashamed, we're not talking about a man who was, oh, we're talking about a man who came out of Judaism. We're talking about an Orthodox Jewish rabbi by the name of Shaul, who had an encounter with Yeshua. He saw the risen Christ. Imagine that. It was a life transformation in one person who came to believe in Yeshua. This is our hope and this is our prayer for the Jewish people worldwide, that they too will come to faith in Yeshua. The faith that they already have in Hashem is the same faith when we come into this saving relationship 
with Yeshua HaMashiach, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. You see, Paul is saying, listen, when I get to you, I'm ready to preach. And I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. In other words, we're not ashamed to declare who we are and what we believe. People may be offended. See, the New Age movement opens all the religions. It's a fusion of all these religions except when it comes to Jesus. Somehow, in some way, we've crossed the line when we declare our faith in Jesus Christ. We are portrayed as lunatics. We are portrayed as crazy. You know, church holy rollers, whatever it is. It's okay to be religious because the world embraces religion. But the world is offended by the name which is above every name. And so you see, we're not ashamed. And that's our declaration of our imuna, our faith. And that is, we are not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. Because you see, Jesus Christ came into the world to save sinners. And see, we're made up a congregation of sinners saved by the grace of God through faith in Jesus Christ our Lord. That's our declaration. That's why I said, here is the very anchor of our soul. It is not in ourselves. It's not in a philosophy. It's not in a religious system. No. We believe in the risen Christ, the Mashiach, the Savior, who came into the world to save sinners, who died on the cross, who was buried and rose up on the third day. We believe in the living Christ. We believe that Jesus is alive, that Jesus will come again, and he will bring all things to the fulfillment of what has been promised for thousands of years to the very people we call the Hebrews that came out of Egypt. And that is simply this. The age to come is the age of the Messiah. That's our messianic hope. We embrace it in unity with our Jewish brothers and sisters throughout the world. We're all looking for the coming of the Messiah, except they don't know that the one who is coming, his name is Yeshua. There is salvation in no other name but Yeshua. And so Paul's declaring, you see, I'm not going to come preaching about God. I'm going to come preaching about the one sent into the world to bring salvation to the world. You see, when the Hebrews were hearing the voice of God at Mount Sinai, they were afraid. They were terrified. And what they said was to Moshe, you go up. You go up. And hear all that God has to say. Then come back to us and tell us everything God said to you. And we will hear it and we will do it. Wow. What a lofty thought. But as we know, it didn't happen that way. But you see, Hashem said, I've heard the words which the people have spoken, and they have spoken rightly. But the lament is, oh, that they had such a heart in them that they would fear me and always keep my commands for their good and the good of their children forever. Forever is a long time. You see, what's implied there is immortality. And see, this is what Yeshua came to bring us. He came from the Father, sent from the Father, with the very words that the Father has to give to us. You see, in these last days, the scripture says, God spoke to us through his son, Yeshua, Hamashiach. See, that's what we have in the gospel. And so you see this gospel of Christ, this gospel of the Mashiach, as Paul declares, is the power of God. The power of God. 
You see, if you don't believe in God, then there's nothing further to discuss about his power. Because how, how shall we discuss the power of a God that you don't even believe exists? So you see, it's imperative for each and every one of us to know and to understand that God is. This God that Paul is talking about is the God of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. This is the God of Israel. Israel is and will always be the chosen people of God to be a light to the nations because the knowledge of God, the true and living God, not the false gods of the worlds around you. The world is a very religious place. Religion is everywhere. But we know that the Lord our God, the Lord is one. That's our declaration of faith. And so you see, the gospel of Christ is the gospel of the power of God. How will God save his people? You see. And so you see, this Amuna is our very salvation. Because you see, if we do not have faith, it is impossible for us to be able to receive what God freely gives through faith. And so you see this power of God to salvation for everyone who believes. It will be of no benefit. It will be of no profit to the unbelievers. Unbelievers have no future and they have no hope. If all you have is science, I can assure you, science will fail you. Because science will never save you from what's coming upon this world. And that is the wrath of God. You see, God will show himself mighty when he pours out his wrath upon an ungodly and unbelieving world that would not glorify him, would not honor him as God. So you see, we're not ashamed to declare who we are, and in whom we believe. You see, this salvation in Yeshua, you see, here we are as sinners, saved by the grace of God, through faith, through Imun, in Yeshua HaMashiach, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. This is what distinguishes us from those who believe in God, but do not have faith in Yeshua. So until they come to that saving faith, which we believe that our God is able to draw them and bring them to the revelation of Yeshua. And we're going to exercise our imuna, and we're going to exercise our bitachon, which is really, bitachon in its simplest form is reliance upon God. We don't rely upon ourselves. We rely on God, Hashem. And I'm going to use the term Hashem because it sets apart every other religion out there that makes reference to God. So if you've got all these different religious people all together in one place and everybody joins hands and says, let's all pray to God. Remember, they're not praying to your God. We pray to the one true and living God. You see, he's the one who sent Yeshua into this world to be the savior of the world. We declare that for Hashem so loved the world he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life so you see the commandment and the obligation of every one of us 
is that we have imuna, that we believe. If we don't believe, then everything else we preach and teach will be of no profit to you. It will be of no value to those who hear it. It's like the Hebrews that came out of Egypt. All the gospel they heard coming out did not profit them anything. Why? Because they did not receive the word of God with faith. You have to believe. You have to have imuna. You have to trust God who said. See, it's one thing to believe that God is, but it's another thing to trust him. See, and that's where we're going to go deeper and deeper into the understanding of the difference between imuna and bitakon. You see, the faith that you have, well, unless you exercise that in your daily lives, it lies dormant. You might as well take it and go bury it because you're afraid to use it. And when the Messiah comes and gives account, we'll stand before him and say, here it is. I took what you gave me and I went and hid it because I was afraid. I didn't do anything with it. I didn't move mountains with it. I didn't advance the cause of the kingdom by working my faith. No. But what is the Messiah going to say? <laughs> no. We've been given this measure of faith for a reason, to use it to move mountains with it, to advance the gospel to all nations, especially the one nation we call Israel. Understand that we have such faith in our God because you see the gospel is the power of God for salvation. This salvation has been promised to the Jewish people from the very beginning. This is the salvation they are longing for will come through the Messiah. Well, the good news is he came. And he overcame. And he took sin and death and nailed it on the cross. He took the curse of the law and became a curse for us. And so you see, we have forever been released from the penalty of our sins because that death penalty was laid and paid in full by the death of Jesus Christ on the cross. There's no other way to be saved from our sins except to have faith, to believe, and to trust in Jesus Christ as the Messiah, your Savior. This is the salvation that we preach. This is what we're not ashamed to proclaim no matter who you are. And so, for the Jew first, and also for the Greek, for the Gentile. So you see, this salvation is not only for the Jew, but also for the Gentile. That's the good news. It's salvation for all of humanity. But what's the condition that you believe? There's your imuna. There's your faith. And so, Verse 17 says, for in it, the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith, from imuna to bitakon. See, from imuna to bitakon. There's the two Hebrew words that we're going to be going through these next 25 weeks, because there's 25 teachings that I want to present to you in the study of Amun Abedakon. And that will be over the next 25 weeks. And God willing, as we move through those 25 weeks, we're hoping at the end of those 25 weeks, we'll be making our way to the Philippines. We'll be making our way back to Rome. We'll be making our way to the very shores of Israel. That's our hope. That's our prayer. This pandemic's not going to last forever. We'll get through it. And we will rejoice and celebrate and sing and worship our God in great assemblies all over the world because you see the government will never be able to put us to silence. 
We know in whom we have believed. We know in God we have put our trust and we will be triumphant and victorious in him. You see, if there's one thing, get a hold of today, that those who have imuna, those who have ditachon, are fortified pillars, towers, that cannot be moved, cannot be shaken. Because you see, you are rooted and built up on this faith of our Lord Jesus Christ. And there is your strength. And see, we as a people are a fortified city. No power in heaven, on earth, or under the earth can destroy what God himself has built. And so you see, we can have such trust in our God because we know that's Simuna, that's Bitakon. You're putting your faith and your trust in God. So you see, from Simuna to Bitakon, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. That comes from Habakkuk 2 and 4. The just shall live by there's the foundational scripture of all that we're going to teach about Imuna Bitakon. Remember, who are the just? But the ones who are justified by faith in Jesus. You see, there's no other way to be justified before God. See, we cannot do it apart from Jesus. You see, Yeshua said, you can do nothing without me and no man comes to the father except by me without jesus there is no salvation without jesus we cannot experience this life of imuna bitakon you see there's teachings out there that will teach imuna bitakon without christ what we're declaring is that the more we live by this imuna, the greater our trust in God becomes day by day. And the more we trust in God, the more we rely upon him and not on ourselves. Because again, we cannot save ourselves, period. We don't rely on humanity to save us from this pandemic. That's why I view science <laughs> with a very careful thought, and that is simply this. When did science begin? In the Garden of Eden. Every branch of science comes from that tree of knowledge. And what has science brought us? Weapons of mass destruction. What has science brought us? biological and chemical warfare. What has science brought us? All the modern things that we think are important have been the very tools of our own destruction. You see, what good is science if we end up exterminating ourselves through our science? Understand. Those weapons of mass destruction were designed in laboratories headed by scientists. How evil is that? That's not the work of God. That's the work of the devil through science. So we have a pandemic and science is confounded. The answer is simple. Have faith. In God. Imuna. Have faith in God. You see, the just shall live by faith. And so, let us go to Mark's gospel because I'm going to build on this faith 
through the teachings of our Lord Jesus Christ, because again, we're not ashamed of the gospel. Well, the gospel is not a story that comes out of a fairy tale. The gospel is the good news of Jesus Christ, the Messiah. And so we are very excited about that. We want to turn to Mark's gospel, chapter 11. We are going to look at a story that is real. And that begins in verse 12. And so, now the next day, when they had come out from Bethany, he, Yeshua, was hungry. Hungry. We all have experienced hunger. Especially when you're driving around and, and restaurants are closed. And you have to wait long drive through lines. And don't have to go to the bathroom, I hope, because there are no bathrooms open. We're living in some peculiar times. Yeshua was hungry and seeing from afar a fig tree having leaves. Now understand, there are many teachings out there that state that this fig tree represents Israel. And the cursing of the fig tree is the cursing of Israel. Well, that could be farthest from the truth. And we'll take that false teaching and throw it in the garbage because that's where it belongs. This is a lesson on Imuna. What power works through your faith? This faith that the just live by is the very power of God that works through faith, through your Imuna. And so you see, when you exercise this faith, you begin to experience the power of God. And so you see, what is basic to humanity, to all creatures, and that is hunger. If you've ever observed an animal that is hungry, God forbid that you should come up against a grizzly bear who hasn't eaten in three days. Hunger is basic to all and every creature on this planet. And so understand, if you've ever been in a buffet line surrounded by hungry people, get out of the way. Because hunger makes people act like, well, not people. And so, from afar, he sees a tree. He sees that it has leaves. He goes to see if perhaps he could find something on it. Well, understand that Yeshua is God himself. Why would God be hungry? And why would God have to go look and see if there's something on the tree? He's the creator. He doesn't need to go and see. He knows. See, this is not something that God is doing for his benefit, but for the benefit of his Talmudim, that he's instructing and showing by an object lesson how this faith works, how to work your imuna, how to use this imuna and exercise this and have that complete trust in God. You see, there is a choice that we have to either live by this faith or not. And if we don't have this trust, if we don't have this faith and trust in God, then we're going to rely upon ourselves to do something about whatever it is. And let me tell you something. If there's one thing that we all know, hunger makes us angry until we've satisfied the hunger. That's why I said, don't be around hungry people because they're not tolerant. They're very hostile, especially when you've got the last morsel on the table. There's one piece left and there's five people who want it. And they're all hungering for it. They're all going to grab for it. They're all going to, see, but listen, this hunger is an object lesson and see he went to see if he would find something on it when he came to it he found nothing but leaves 
for it was not the season for figs. Well, then why would the Lord be upset at a fig tree that's only doing what it's supposed to be doing? Well, I've come to learn that when a fig tree has leaves, it should have fruit. But there's no fruit on it. So what's the purpose of this? Well, there's many of us like this fig tree who claim to believe in God. Okay, if you have imuna, then there should be fruit on your branches. Because you see, this is not simply a, well, I believe, a mental belief. Like it says in James, the demons believe. And they tremble. Understand. Simply to believe is not what living by faith is about. Do something with it. You see, your faith will save you. Your faith will heal you. Your faith will move mountains. There's where the Lord's going with this. You don't have to starve to death. You have within you this measure of faith. Use it. It is a gift from God. Well, the natural response of any person who's relying on themselves is to take it and curse it. That's what we're seeing in the world today. You know what science is doing? Cursing us. Telling everybody that this pandemic is going to take the lives of millions and millions of people worldwide. And government leaders are acting on that. And what have we found to this day? That their fears are unfounded. You see, the opposite of faith is fear. We have an adversary that works through your fear. We have God who works through your faith. You want to live? You live by faith. You want to live? You live by your imuna. And as you grow in this faith, your trust in God, you'll never find yourself hungry. You'll never find yourself without. Even in the midst of a pandemic, you have confidence. You have peace. Assured. That no matter what the scene looks like, no matter what the problem you are facing, you trust in the living God. You have bitachon. Your reliance is upon the one who created all things. Who brought all things into being by the very word. That proceeds out of his mouth. God said. And so it was. And so it is. You see. We don't fear the pandemic. Because our faith. And trust is in God. Why are we so confident? Why are we so calm? Why do we have this serenity? Why do we laugh and rejoice. And, and are glad each day. These Christians must be crazy. It's our faith. We live by faith, not by fear. We are not worried. We are not anxious. We are not fearful of tomorrow. We know in who we have trusted. We know that our God is faithful. And even when we are faithless, he remains faithful. He can never deny who he is. He is God. He will always be there for you. He will never leave you. He will never forsake you. We're here today by the grace of God. Understand. 
We have nothing to fear but fear itself. When you have Imuna, when you have Bitakon, you are a fortified tower. You stand strong in the midst of storms. You're not afraid of a pandemic and you're not afraid of a famine. You're not afraid of what science is telling you will be our demise. Science is telling us that the sun is going to go dark. Well, before the scientist was, Jesus already told us the sun will grow dark and the moon will not give its light. We know that darkness is coming. We know that the end is coming because the Lord himself said, but you see, we're not to be afraid. We're not to worry. What we're to do is rest in our trust in God. The Lord will provide sufficient for all our need and abundantly for every good work. We have more than enough. That's the lesson of the loaves. No one has to go hungry. No one has to die. If you simply believe and trust in God, God will never put you to shame for having believed him. Understand that. But you see, our faith cannot be like these fig leaves. You see, that's the problem with religion. It's all show. It's a nice covering, but it doesn't work. Your religion is powerless. How many religious people out there are terrified of this pandemic? But those who have faith in God. We're not talking about an idol. We're talking about the true and living God. Those who have faith and trust in Yeshua know that the great physician is the Lord himself. And see, in these lessons, we're going to learn the power of faith. We're going to see all the wonders and the power of God that works through faith. Yeshua said time and time again, your faith has saved you. Your faith has made you well. Your faith has done that. I have not seen such great faith, Yeshua said. Not even in all of Israel where it should be, but I see it in this Roman centurion. You see, God is almighty, all-powerful, all-sufficient. You will not lack any good thing when you believe and trust in God. Rest assured that your faith will move the mountains. And that's where this is going. Because we see it right here. So you see, in our natural response to a problem, the first thing that comes out of our mouth is a curse. Don't listen to the naysayers. Don't listen to the media that's only pouring out wickedness. Curse after curse after curse after curse. I'm tired of it. I'm tired of a government that keeps cursing the people. Death scientists that are cursing the people the people are going to die the pandemic's going to get worse it's going to spread all over the earth the whole planet's going to perish <clears throat> you want my advice turn the tv off you want my advice fire the doctor dr death mr scientist who is only preaching death that's the curse. And you see, this is what Jesus is showing here. In response, Jesus said, let no one eat fruit from you ever again. There's the death sentence. There's the curse. This is what comes out of our mouths when we don't have that faith and trust in God. This is an object lesson for the disciples who are learning this life of faith, this imuna. You see, it is a Lesson, we live by faith. The just shall live by faith. The moment we come to faith in Yeshua, we call upon the name of the Lord. We are saved and we are sealed for all eternity. You've got nothing to worry about. You have everlasting life assured to you. As I got to wake up tomorrow morning and face the world. Here's where my faith is going to be tried and going to be tested. 
Know this, that the adversary is going to try to prove that your faith is fake, false, that you don't have any faith and you don't have any trust in God, and he's going to try to prove it. And there's where our test comes in. It's like James says, count it all joy when you encounter various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. Let patience have its perfect work, that you may be complete, that you may be perfect, lacking nothing. See, because when your immuna is operating, when your bitakon is growing day by day, you will lack nothing. Why? Because God works through your faith to accomplish his purposes in the world. Imagine what can happen with people who truly believe and have faith in God. Well, he said it, and his disciples heard it. And so we go down to verse 20, he says, Now in the morning, as they passed by, they saw the fig tree dried up from the roots. Wow. Listen. Life and death are in the power of the tongue. A Christian should never open their mouth and curse by pouring out negative things. Don't do it. We are people of faith. We believe, we trust in God. And that is what we preach, and that is what we teach. We're all preachers. We're all proclaimers of the gospel. On the one hand, we say that we believe in Jesus for our salvation. On the other hand, we're parroting what the media is saying about this pandemic. And we're telling everybody, you're going to die. It's going to hit us. We're going to... What are you doing? Don't do that. You see, that's the curse. And all the curse is going to do is bring forth death. And so you see this tree that had great potential to bear much fruit, had it been blessed, was cursed. And so it died and was dried up from its roots. And so the disciples saw it. They remembered what they heard. And Peter, remembering, said to him, Rabbi, look, the fig tree which you cursed has withered away. Peter, what a great theologian you are to be able to distinguish between the blessing and the curse. So when you heard the words of the Lord being spoken to this fig tree, you perceived that to be a curse because guess what? Let no one eat fruit from you ever again. That's like saying you're going to die. So you see, when scientists keep telling the people, you're going to die. This virus is going to infect you. This virus is going to kill you. You're going to spread the virus. You know what that is? That's a curse coming out of every mouth, out of every mouth out there. And when you got all these mouths breathing out all these curses, any wonder that we're seeing what we're seeing happen? You see, this is what Yeshua said. He said, have imuna, have bitakon in God. See, the term faith here really means is to rely on God. Roll it over upon him. Don't take matters into your own hands. It's not for you to do. You're not God. Let me remind you, Mr. Scientist, you're not God. You don't have the power to declare death on the people. In God we live, in God we move and have our being. Our very breath is in him. Not in a scientist, not in their right. mm -hmm. miracle cures. Faith, the prayer of faith will save the sick. Understand, all of this that we see in the world, all of this death, is because we chose to sin against God. And when we chose to sin against God, death came into the world and spread throughout all humanity. Let me tell you something. I don't fear COVID-19. There is a worse virus that has infected all humanity. 
and that is sin. And the day is coming when sinners will come under the wrath of God. Fear God, not a pandemic. Fear God. That's the beginning of wisdom. All science has been able to tell us is there is no God. Scientists perish with your false God because that is the word of the devil. And so you see, science has made no advance except this, to advance the cause of evil, to bring a world to even doubt the very existence of the one who created all things. God is. Understand that. And he's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Seek the Lord while he may be found. All you got to do is call out on the name of the Lord. What's his name? Yeshua. Salvation in no other name. No other name given among men whereby we must be saved. Great things happen when we call on the name of the Lord. And whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. The just shall live by faith. And so the Lord said, have faith in Hashem. Have faith in God. Have imuna bitakon in God. For surely I see you. Whoever says to this mountain, be removed, be cast into the sea. Does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things he says will be done. He'll have whatever he says. Remember, that's a double-edged sword there. If you keep saying you're going to die from this pandemic, you're going to die from the pandemic because you cursed yourself. Stop cursing. Stop putting out those curses out there. In him we live, in him we breathe, in him we have our very being. No life is possible apart from Hashem, our God. Remember that. In him is life, and the life is the light of man. That's all the knowledge we need is to know that God is and that he who created all things is the sustainer of all things and he who created us is he who can save us from this epidemic we call sin and the death that it produces know this Yeshua Jesus came and became a curse for us and what was laid upon him was the iniquity of a soul. And in him, we have our healing. And in him, we have all things. He who did not withhold his only begotten son, but gave, offered him up as a sacrifice for us all, how shall he not by him freely give us all things? You see, there is nothing, and I will say it again, nothing impossible to him who believes and has faith in God. And see, this is the lesson that Yeshua is saying. You can move the mountain. Your mountain is whatever is in front of you that is that problem, is that pandemic, without anything, whatever it is you're facing. Every problem has a solution, and the solution is already created, and the wisdom of the Creator Himself is right there. <clears throat> All you have to do is ask and it will be given to you. God will give you the wisdom to navigate through whatever it is you're going through, even this pandemic. Wouldn't it be amazing more people began to cry out to God than to cry out to the government or to cry out to the scientists? These quackers, <laughs> let me tell you something. All they preach is fear, death, and curses. 
the just shall live by faith. Imuna bitakon. And so to wrap it up, verse 24, he says, Therefore, I say to you, you, my Talmudim, you, those who believe and follow me, whatever things you ask when you pray, here it is. Here's how you exercise your faith. This is how you put it to work every day. Pray. Listen. Instead of opening our mouths and uttering the first thing that comes out of our mouth is a curse, be silent. Say nothing. Go into your room. Go into your prayer closet and close the door. Turn off the television. Turn off the radio. Throw that smartphone outside. And just take time to pray to God. Yeshua says believe. Believe that you receive those things that you are asking for. And you know what the assurance is? You will have them. This is what we're going to learn over the next 25 weeks. And that is simply to live by imuna, to exercise our beta coin every day and in every situation that comes our way, rather than open our mouth and pour out evil. We get on our knees, and raise our hands to heaven, and we pray to the one who assured us, I'm with you always, even to the end of the age. Thank you, Lord, because in you we have peace, shalom. In you we have all things. And so you see that calm, tranquility, that serenity is there for the asking if you will only trust in the Lord. You see, when we are worried and fearful, the thing that we are worried and fearful of will become our reality. You can rest assured, if that's what's coming out of your mouth, Yeshua already said, whatever's coming out of your mouth, you will eventually start believing in your heart that it's going to happen, and it will come upon you because you brought it through your own mouth. Yeshua said, for every careless word man speaks, he'll give account of it in the day of judgment. For by your words you will be justified, and by your words you will be condemned. Your salvation or condemnation rests in what comes out of your mouth. That's the lesson today. Every word that comes out of your mouth, you're exercising faith either in God or you're believing those words that they're going to happen. And if you keep saying things are getting worse, they're gonna to continue to get worse and worse for you because you're bringing upon yourself the very thing you keep saying. So you see, if we open our mouths and what comes out of it is curses, then we will see what could have been a fruitful life-giving tree will end up being dried up from its roots and dead. That's what curse does. It brings death and destruction. Saints, we pray. And we continue to pray and trust in the Lord. And the assurance is you will receive what you have asked for in faith belief. That is the truth. Amen. Rochelle? Working on it. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> okay. Took me a few attempts to get it to unmute. Yes, you gave us a lot to uh, chew on. A lot to digest, a lot to put into action, and and uh, a lot to build on. And we thank you for that. Uh, 
when you uh, were in Romans, I was reminded from the Greek background, not the Hebrew, but from the Greek background, the word power there, that's the power of God and the salvation. For years, I've been taught that uh, we get a word dynamite from that. But someone once took it a step further and said, really, because we're talking about action here rather than the noun, what they should have said is that instead of dyna dynamite is dynamic. dynamic. And that just, I think, sums up what you've said today in a word. If we had to sum it up in a word is, is how we can be dynamic for our Lord. Amen. In his power, by faith in action so thank you we'll look forward to you building on it love the hebrew background love the greek background too <laughs> but i trust it blessed others as much as it did me nice. so let's close in a word of prayer and then open up mics for comments Lord god again we we thank you for giving us this opportunity to hear your word and now we pray for the application that it will not just be words that we heard and we forget but that it really will uh, impact us that it's in our minds and in our hearts that you'll massage it into our hearts and into the very fiber of our being and that we will awaken into a new level of that this faith and this trust that will accomplish that that uh, you want us to be doing lord and may we realize what comes out of our mouth is does matter and may it be words and thoughts that are appropriate and right in line with you thank you that you are able to do this and so much more in us we give you the glory lord it is you who does it we praise you and we thank you and we pray blessings on pastor Gil for sharing and to all for taking the time lord let it uh let it the results last all day long we praise you and thank you in your name Amen. Amen.